First of all, everybody? Yeah. Yeah, for one second I lost, I forgot my, my birthday. Wait, I think I'm 32. No, I'm not lying, I think I am 32. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am 32. I just thought about that. I was warning you now, so you guys want to do the math. But, anyways, uh, I just want to thank God because He has given me the opportunity to be here once again. And uh, I thank God because my family's with me and everybody's doing okay. And um, I want you guys to open up your Bibles to, um, to the book of Genesis, chapter 17, and we're going to read verse 1. So, um, Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. Man, you guys have have already, um, it says like this. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. So I want to preach to you guys today on the on the subject, knowing God as El Shaddai. So in other words, knowing God as God Almighty. So you guys can bow your hands and, and we can go before the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning, Lord, to give you all the honor, all the praise, Lord. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here, Lord, to worship your holy name, Lord. We thank you, Lord. For the great things that you have done in our lives, for the great things that you have done in this church, Lord. At this moment, Lord, I pray and I ask, Lord, that you preach to us today, this morning, Lord, that we hear your word with freedom, Lord, that your spirit flows in this place, Lord. I ask you to anoint your servant and the lips of your servant to preach the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys can take your seats. So, um, this, uh, this this uh this chapter and especially the story with Abraham, well, at that time it was not Abraham, is one of my, my favorite ones because when he was he was it says he was ninety nine, God appeared to him and told him, I am God Almighty. And the reason why he shows up to him and tells him who he is, because if you read before, God shows to him and shows him and because Abraham fights the four kings, right? And God tells him, I am your shield. So Abraham knew him as a shield, and also Abraham knew him as a provider, but at this moment he didn't know him as God Almighty. So God appears to him and tells him, I am God Almighty, because I'm about to do great things in your life. So he shows up to him and, and, and tells him that, and tells him, I am God Almighty. And God explains to him and gives him the covenant of what's going to happen, and he tells him, you're going to have a son. And when he tells him that, Abraham says, he laughs. So that's why they name him Isaac. Isaac, because that's, well, that's what it means. He laughed. But God showed to him and showed in the, the beginning of the chapter, of, I am God Almighty. And yet, Abraham still doubted and laughed. Why? Because he still didn't know him as God Almighty. He still didn't know that God was going to do all those great things for him. And, and we're going to get into it in a little bit, but as, as, as Christians, we have to know God as, as God Almighty. Yeah. See, because we live in a crazy world, right? Yeah. And where do we get this power to live in today's crazy world? In a world where life is hard, in a world where Christians are being you know, targeted. Where do we get the power to live in a world that's filled with difficult challenges? Where do we get the power to keep going every day in our lives? You know, we face challenges every day. I mean, right now some, somebody caught me off and I like, I'm going to church. I'm, I can't, I know, I'm not a business person. But, you know, we face challenges every time. So, every, every day, there's, there's difficulties in our lives. And in order to, to overcome these challenges and succeed, we need strength. We need endurance. And we need power. But where do we get this power? And where do we get the strength? You now, Paul, Paul tells them, the people in Ephesians, he tells them in chapter 6, where he says, My brothers... Be strong in the Lord. No, be strong in the Lord and the power is mine. You want to you want to be you want to overcome things? It's through the strength of our Lord. Not in your own, but through his power. That's where you get the power from. That's where you who you rely on. See today's message I want you guys to preach today. 
is that you and I don't have to live a powerless life. The God didn't call us to, to be powerless. See, God wants us to, to live our lives full of His power. I mean, He wants to show His power. And also, He wants to give us His power. Because the Bible says in chapter, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says that you shall receive power. You shall receive power when the Spirit comes upon you. So why? What God wants to do is He wants to show His power in our lives, and He wants to give His power in our lives. But many think that, think that there's a method to it. How do I get this power? How do, how do I, I get to know this power? And they look for things or how to, to get this power. But you guys all know Harry Houdini, right? The great escape artist. And who has ever heard of him? No, he, he's, he's one. He's a famous guy for escaping everything, right? Handcuffs, prison cells, and anything that was trying to confine him. Now, he boasted many times that nothing could stop him, and no, 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 and no, no jail cell could hold him. And that, you know, he, he never fell. You know, that was true. He, was, he would always escape from whatever he was uh, prison or, or handcuffs. He would always escape. Well, almost, because there's a legend that says that in one occasion, he didn't enter his cell, as he usually does, with just the street clothes. And then he walks in, and the authorities walk out, and then just shut the door behind him, and just let him be there alone. And, and just like he did so many times, he just pulled a little piece of metal, really strong, and he began to work the lock in the cell. But this time the cell wouldn't open, and he brought his knowledge to it, and everything he knew, he knew about lots, and he just couldn't get it open, and after two hours later, you know, he, he got frustrated, and you know, he, he, he gave up. He finally gave up. You no, know, the lock just wouldn't open. So the great Houdini, the one that said that nothing could stop him, he finally failed. Why? Now, what went wrong? Was he, the guards forgot to lock the cell? All really all he was needed to do was just open it, because it was open, it was unlocked. See, the only, the only place the door was locked was in his mind, because the door was open. And he tried to open the door, and it was open. You know, does this sound familiar to, to some of us that try to open a door that God has already opened? Try to get a power that God has already given us? They kept also trying so hard to find the power of God. They tried to find it, they tried to seek it in their lives. They tried to find a method for how to unleash God's powers, but they never really unlock it. And finally, in frustration, they quit. Assuming that the power is too elusive, that it was only for some selected few, it was only for a distant time back in the past, it was only for the apostles, it was only for the missionaries. Or it was only, the only access to it is a method that they can't find or they can't figure out. But the truth is that there is no method. The Bible says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes over you. If the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you have the power of God. You have the Spirit, you have His power. See, He wants us to, to know Him as God Almighty. And He wants to show His power in us. See, the reason why Abraham laughed when God appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Now it's time for you to know me as God Almighty because I'm going to do great things in your life. And, and he laughed with it. The, tr the thing is that very few know God as El Shaddai. Wow. Very few know him as God Almighty. And they see, the, 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 they see God in the scriptures who deliver Israel from slavery in Egypt and splits, and splits the Red Sea, turns water into wine, and the race is dead and heals the blind. And we see everything in the Bible, we see everything that Jesus has done, and He has done in the, in the Old Testament too. But we still try to figure out and say that that power is not meant for us. But Jesus said those who will believe in Him will do greater things, greater miracles than these. They will raise the dead, they will heal the sick and, and heal the lame. 
And well, how can this be? And many people, many of us wonder why I have never experienced the miracles in my life. Again, the reason why is because we don't know him as God Almighty. See, the thing is that some of us know him as a father who cares for us. Now, some of us know him as a shepherd who guides us. But very few know him as God Almighty. See, when I was growing up, when I got baptized, I knew and I knew God as my as my Savior. And I and, I, and once I was reading, I started to know him as a father, as a shepherd that would guide me. And I was just growing in faith, I was I was knowing him as a God that cared for me, a shepherd that would take me to places that I shouldn't be. He would t- teach me from right and wrong, and I knew him as that. But I still didn't know him as God Almighty. And I remember one time a preacher came to church and he started preaching about miracles and wonders and everything that God has done, it has done in his life. And this one occasion, he says that he was preaching, he was going to go preach to, to a believer who was going to Arizona. And then his, his, his light, his uh, gas light went, went, started saying that he needed gas. And he started thinking, well, the next gas is, you know, gas in the station is not, it's nowhere near me, I'm not going to make it. He says that he wasn't going to make it with that gas that he had in his tank, so... He says that he prayed and said, Lord, I gotta make it to this place, I gotta make it to this church, and I gotta preach. So he said, In Jesus' name, I'm gonna make it. And then he says that he saw his, his uh, gas gauge go from empty to full. And at that moment, I said, Lord, I wanna know you, and I wanna see those miracles in my life. See, I wanna see that power in my life. Just as you've done with many other, many preachers that have said that, I wanna see that power in my life. And I remember when I said that, the time passed by and it felt, it felt like I still got, like, Lord, put me in the worst situations in my life. Because at that time I didn't know what I was asking for. Amen. Sure. Yeah. See, but, the, but what God was doing is, I can't show you my power sitting on the couch. I had to take you out of there. Because in order to be, in order for there to be power, there needs to be chaos, right? In order for there to be healing, there needs to be sickness. So I told God, I want to know you as God Almighty. See, He wants to take you out of that place of comfort and take you out into the desert. And at that moment, he wants to show you his power. So you can't know God and Almighty depending on your parents. And let me let me let me tell you, let me tell you the story. We all know the story of Jacob, right? We know that Jacob was just stealing left and right. You know, he stole his brother's blessing and you know, he tricked him to give him his birthright. So we know that, right? But when he's at that moment that he stole the blessing from his brother Esau, he runs away. And God was going to bless Jacob because he, he, he had a blessing now. And as a, as a human perspective, or as a human logic, we, we would think that Esau was more more capable of receiving the blessing, right? Because he was, you know, like a warrior, he was going, huh? And Jacob was just sitting there at his home doing nothing because, you know, the Bible doesn't say anything, but Jacob, Jacob just being there. So if Jacob was living in today's times, it would be like this. He would be watching TV, get up to the fridge, open it, eat, and go back and sit down. But, you know, he had servants, so maybe he would ask the servants to cook something for him. So that's, that's the life of Jacob. But God says, I'm going to bless this person. I have to keep the promise that I gave to his father and the promise that I gave to his, his grandfather. But he doesn't know me as God. He hasn't had an encounter with me. And he runs, and he's, the Bible says that him in the middle of the desert, he's, he's there at night, and he just grabs a pillow, or a, a rod as a pillow, 
And I don't know what maybe what Jacob was thinking, but maybe he was thinking something like, where's the blessing that I received? You know, my, my dad just gave me a blessing that I'm here running for my life. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I don't even know if I'm going to make it to my, to my uncle's house. I might die in this desert. Yeah. Oh, who's going to help me here? Maybe I should just go back to my parents' house. Because I received a blessing, but where, where's the blessing? I have nothing with me. I just have this rock, this my pillow. But God, God said, this is the moment. This is the place. See, if, if you look at the story, the Bible says that God appeared to him. And when Jacob saw angels going up and down, and God stood up in there and, and, and he showed you know, to him as God Almighty, Jacob said, told God, if you protect me, you will be my God. So I'm thinking, was Jacob trying to find another God? Was he thinking of choosing another God? Because remember, in those days, they would choose different gods. And they were living in a land where they had different gods. So was Jacob thinking of, of another God? Because he says, if you protect me, then you will be my God. See, but, but, what, but what the Bible is telling us is that God needed to take out Jacob out of that place to show him his power. God needed Jacob to, God needed Jacob to know him as God Almighty and not just as a God of his parents. Yeah. Yeah. See, when, you, when God takes you out of your place and brings you out and you feel like you have scars, well, then so that your scars bring the power of God's life. Your scars bring the gospel to life. See, God wants us to know Him as God Almighty. He wants us to know Him as our God and not the God of my parents. See, but when I call Him, I don't have to call out to Him and say, Lord, the Lord of my parents, just like you help them, help me. The God doesn't want us to call Him like that. He wants us to call Him, Lord, my God, Help me. Yeah. See, this, this, this week my, my son was, was a little bit sick. I believe it was Tuesday. He had a fever. And I, and I prayed and said, Lord, my God, heal him in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And the next day he woke up with no, with no fever. Yeah. Because that's the power of God. Yeah. See, that's how God wants us to call out to him. He wants us to call him as our God and not as the God of our parents. Right. See, I, I wanted to know God like that. I don't want to know God just the God that did miracles for my parents. I wanted to know God as the God that does miracles in my life too. And let me, let me tell you a story. If you guys go to, to, to Acts chapter 19 verse 11, and this is why God wants us to know him as God Almighty. So Acts chapter 19, verse 11. And it says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the disease left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So this is what God was doing with Paul. Now, the Bible says that he was a, uh, a tent maker, so when he would, he would take out his clothes or his apron, and people would come and steal it from him. Because they would take it to the sick and they would be healed just with his, with his clothes. So this was what God was doing. Then, then, then some of the Iter and Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exercise you by the Jesus who Paul preaches. Not my God, not the God that I serve, but the God that Paul serves. Not the God that I know. Just, it's just this God that I hear about. Also, there were seven sons of Siva, verse, uh, verse 14. A Jewish chief priest who did so, and the evil, and the evil spirit answered, to, answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Verse 16. Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leading, was leaped on them 
overpowered them and prevailed against them, so they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Wow. See, they were trying to cast out a demon with the power that they didn't know, with the power that they didn't have. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. They tell him, I command you to come out in the name of Jesus, the one that Paul preaches. I don't know him. I don't know if he's capable of, but I, I, I've heard Paul's doing it. So I, I want to try it out. This time they didn't try out their usual routine that they would do to cast out demons. They wanted to try something different. Something that they didn't know, they had no knowledge of. Let me tell you something. You cannot put your hope in what someone has done. You cannot put your hope in, some, in, in, in someone that has done something. Unless it's Jesus, right? You don't come before God and say, Lord, the God of my grandparents, the God of my parents, and they will you know, help me. You don't come and say, Lord, my, my grandfather was a preacher, so I think we're good, right? You don't say, my mom was the same, so I think we're good, right? You don't call out the name of God and say of what someone else has done. Let me tell you something. What your parents have done is separate from what you are going to do. The relationship that God has with your parents is different from the relationship He has with your, with your life. What, has, what God has done in their life is separate from what He's doing in your life. You cannot rely on, on, on what they've done and it's going to work for you. God says, everybody, everybody's life is individual. Everybody has to know me as God. Your relationship is separate. God, God had already called out Abraham and given the covenant. He had an encounter with God. And then Isaac came and did the same thing. And Jacob was in the situation. God says, it's your turn now. Now it's your turn to know me as God. As God Almighty. What your parents have done, what the promise that I have given you, is different. If you want to continue this walk, you got to know me as God Almighty. If you want this blessing, you have to know me as God. Forget what your parents have done. You need to do what I'm telling you to do, and that is to walk faithfully before me. Yes. See, this, this man right here, this Jewish man, was trying to cast out a demon with the power that they didn't have. You know, they, they, they wanted God's power, but they didn't want Jesus. Wow. See, they wanted His power, but they didn't want God. Yeah. See, they wanted the power of Jesus, but they wouldn't go through Him to get it. And a lot of us want to be like Paul. I have the power, and have the ministry that He had. But we don't, we don't want to pay the price. We want the power, we want the blessing, we want the healing. But we don't want Jesus. We don't want to go to Him. We don't want to go to Him. We just want to receive the blessings. This man was trying to get the power, but they didn't want nothing to do with God. They want to see a miracle, but they don't want nothing to do with God. <clears throat> Many of us think that God's going to do great things in us because He also did it in, in our parents. The truth is that we have to serve God just like our parents did. Why don't you guys just stand up? If you guys want to see the power of God, if you want to see the life, the, the power of moving your life,
This is what power looks like. It's, it's, it's the same chapter, verse 17. This is what it says. This became known both to all Jewish and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell upon them. And the name of the Lord was magnified. That's the power of God. That's when you see the power of God. When the fear of the Lord comes before you. Because if you read again the same verse, the same chapter, from Genesis 17, when God comes to, to, to Abraham, he says, I am God Almighty. You want to see my power? You want to see what I can do? Walk before me faithfully and blameless. Doesn't mean without sin. It just means to walk with the fear of the Lord. Yeah. If you want to see the, 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 the things that God can do in your life, you want to see Him moving in your life, in your ministry, walk before Him faithfully, and you will see the power of God. 